So the sisters kept on insisting that there must be something wrong where there was something concealed, and at last they got their mother the queen to say to her as she was leaving, Now, Anima, I think it right to know him and what thy husband is. Wait till he is asleep and light a lamp, and then see what he is. Soon after this they all departed, and the same night her husband came to Anima again. But she had already prepared a lamp of oil with a spark of fire ready to kindle it, and when she heard him sleeping by her side she lit the candle and looked at him. She was delighted to find that he was most handsome, with a strong and well-made body. But as she was looking at him her hand trembled, with delight and three drops of oil fell upon his cheek from the lamp she was holding. Then he woke up and saw her, and knew that she had broken her promise, and said, Oh, Anima, oh, Anima, why hast thou done this? Here we part until thou canst persuade my mother the queen to let thee see me again. With that came a rumbling of thunder and her lamp went out, and Anima fell to the ground in a swoon. And when she awoke the palace had disappeared and she was on a bleak, bleak moor. She walked and she walked till she came to a house by the wayside where an old woman received her and gave her something to eat and drink. And then asked Anima how she came there. So Anima told all that had happened to her. And the old woman said, Thou hast married my nephew, my sister's son, and I fear she will never forgive thee. But pluck of courage, go to her and demand thy husband, and she'll have to give him up to thee if thou canst do all this she demands from thee. Take this twig, if she asks what I think she will ask, strike it on the ground thrice and help will come to thee. Then she told Anima the way to her husband's mother, and, as it was far distant, gave her directions where she could find another sister of hers who might help her. So she came to another house along the way where she saw another old woman, to whom she told her story. And to this old woman, the queen's sister, gave her a raven's feather and told her how to use it. At last Anima came to the palace of the queen, the mother of her invisible husband. And when she came into her presence demanded to see him, what? Thou were born mortal, cried the queen, how didst thou dare to wed my son? It was his choice, said Anima, and I am now his wife, surely you will let me see him once more. Well, said the queen, if thou canst do what I demand of thee thou shalt see my son again, and first go into that barn where my stupid stewards have poured together all the wheat and oats and rice into one great heap. If by night, for thou canst separate them into three heaps, perhaps I may grant thy request. So Anima was led to the great barn of the queen and there was a huge heap of grain all mixed together. And she was left alone, and the barn was closed upon her. Then she bethought herself of the twig that the queen's sister had given her, and she struck it thrice upon the ground. Whereupon thousands of ants came out of the ground and began to work upon the heap of grain. Some of them taking the wheat to one corner, some the oats to another, and the rest carrying off the grains of rice to its earth. By nightfall all the grain had been separated, and when the queen came to let out him when she found the task had been done, thou hast had help. She cried, we'll see tomorrow if thou canst do something by thyself. Next day the queen took her into a large loft at the top of the palace almost filled with feathers of geese, of eider ducks and of swans, and from their cupboards she took twelve mattresses and said, See these mattresses, by the end of the day thou must fill four of them with swans feathers, four of them with either down, and the rest with feathers of geese, do that and then we will see.